Hello there. Sarah from 17 once again. At the beginning of hopefully a live playthrough of a game that had a big influence in my life or a series that had a massive influence in my gaming life, I should say. And that is Final Fantasy VIII. So I'm going to start a new game. And uh, hopefully Squaresoft, as they were named now, or Square Enix, aren't too stringent with their copyright schemes. And um, we'll be okay. So this is going to be a Let's Play, folks. I'm going to talk over cutscenes. Uh, I'm going to do silly voices. I'm going to generally do what it is that I do in these kind of videos. And it's not to everybody's tastes, and if you don't like it... Uh, feel free to not watch and go and watch something you do like. Uh, just going to put this disclaimer here because it's so much easier to go elsewhere than it is to complain and then I don't have to deal with all the complaints. But this is a a music piece here. It's, it's kind of the music piece for the game composed by Nobuo Uematsu which is probably a horrendous pronunciation but I don't mind. And what they're doing here is they're kind of giving you all the elements of the story, but it's being conveyed in such a fast montage-esque, out of concept, you know, flicker of events and characters that you have no real knowledge of what is happening. But when you've played it before and you come back to this, you see so many, you know, little things that it suggests to, with the themes of the story, the characters, the threads, and all that good stuff. And that is, of course, the Gunblade, the infamous Gunblade. A weapon that makes no sense at all of how the hell it works. It's ergonomically completely unsound, but I love everything about it. We have a lovely little transition there from the Feathers of the Sword to the back of Renault with the wings on her. A mysterious character there with some wicked hair. And the concept of the early 90s, or the mid 90s, should I say, mid to late 90s. I don't even know why I said early, but the, the CGI of the early 90s, where nobody had any imperfections on their skin, so everybody's got like wicked, you know, just facial, no acne, no spots, no nothing, just flawless porcelain skin. And here is one of the main threads throughout the game the rivalry between the lead character and, you know, his major competitor, and just more out of context scenes. But I've been trying to record this for ages, and I hope it doesn't get like copyright raped. Because I've tried on the PlayStation 2, I've tried on the PSX E emulator, I've tried on. I've tried all sorts, and it hasn't really worked. <laughs> but I'm hoping that this does. Squall takes a big hit there by Sifa and comes back with his own you know, just massive montage of events poignant events too to the late title card and the fantastic piece of artwork done by Yoshitaku Amano and there is Final Fantasy VIII so this has been played on the Playstation 3 I've bought the Playstation 1 Classic the screen is super cropped. I don't know if I can change that, but it's, it's wicked cropped. And I've been playing this game on my PS2, and the screen was like filling my 42-inch television. Sure, it didn't look quite as condensed as this, and these games do look better on smaller TVs, but still, this is going to take some adjusting to. But, Dr. Karawaki, how are you feeling? So I'm going to say my forehead hurts, because we just took a sword to the face. So there you go. <laughs> She's like, no kidding, dog. You just took a sword to the face. <laughs> Test our eyes focusing. We should be fine. And what is our name? So I normally put the dumbest, most ridiculous names for characters on games. But there's something sacred about Final Fantasy. I never change the names on these games. So She's asking us to take it easy in training. Next time we might not be so lucky. He's like, tell that to Sifa. Guy's a baller. Just comes at me with a sword. And Sifa won't listen to anybody, so we should probably ignore him. And Squall's hitting her back with, I can't just run away, which is kind of the first real example of his personality. So she's asking us who our instructor is, and our instructor is a girl called Quistis. And she's calling her now. 
So we're going to get introduced to our instructor, which just drives home the fact that if I was part of this garden, I would not do so well. So we're not seriously injured, it'll leave a scar, and she's calling for our, our teacher to drop by. And this is the first sequence where you get an out of context moment that you'll appreciate when you play through it again. So we meet again, Squall. I am the lady with the most manly voice. Barry White's sister. So there's Quistis. She's a little young for a teacher, which makes it all the more difficult to be a student under her, especially when you're probably taller than her. Because these guys, like, in the, the 17, 18, yeah, just not a good situation. If I was Squall, I would be in some wicked trouble. So, I know to be the URC for, because we're always fighting. And I do love this visual style. Pixels age better than you think they do. So come on, let's go to the field exam. So I have quite a storied history with Final Fantasy. Uh, Quistis is just going to be poking fun at us now. Basically, Squall doesn't really share. He's a very introverted guy. He's a very dependent guy. And uh, he's not so good in social situations. And at first you're going to feel that he's kind of like an emo, he's kind of a bit of a douche, a bit of a downer, wants to sit in the corner and write poetry and, you know, drink coffee in, in hipster coffee shops and what have you. But it's it's not really that, it's just the case of, as you progress through the game, certain elements of his character are going to be embellished, and it's going to make sense why he's isolated himself so much, and why he has this, this stoic personality as we hear the first lilt of the Balaam's Garden's main theme. And this is it, folks. So, the garden itself is a military organisation that is also a school, and you learn to fight at it. So all the students that go there will eventually mature into seeds and become military representatives of the garden, which are essentially a mercenary force. They're extremely young, but it's it's called the Tenchi Muyo Syndrome, where everybody, you know, in the, the late teens seems to be able to save the world, while everybody a little bit older is completely useless. But here is Quistis. Good morning, class. Let's start with today's schedule. This place looks awesome, and look how, how much of a desk they get. Uh, my, my schools were really crowded. They were nothing like this, but the field exam for seed candidates will begin later this afternoon. So, we have a test. Those not participating and those who failed last week's written test are to remain here in the study hall. Field exam participants will have free time until the exam. Just be sure you're in top condition and meet in the hall at 1600 hours. So I've announced the team assignments there. Any questions? <laughs> I would have plenty, but all of them are inappropriate because you goddamn your heart. Oh, and Sifa, don't beat up your training party, goddammit. <laughs> so it's funny how everyone else has got identical uniforms and then the Squall and Sifa in, in badass coats. That can't be right. And apparently Quistus needs to talk to us. But before we do that, we're going to go on this console on here and we're going to... Can we do that? Yes, we can. This PlayStation analog is a little bit looser than my, um, my PS2 one. And we're going to turn on the computer. And look at what he's got in his desk at school. When I was at school, we had like half a computer that we shared on, you know, every lunar eclipse. These people have got them built in the desk. So you want to go to tutorial, or tutorial, log in and squall. And it's going to give us our GFs. And a GF is Guardian Force, which is essentially a summon. And we get Quetzalcoatl and we get Shiva, which... If you're good on your mythology, you'll recognize some of these names because they do have origins in, in various uh, regional mythologies. So there's this tutorial. And here is the tutorial menu, which is going to tell you a lot of stuff if you don't need it, but we're not going to be using any of it. So we can come out of that. I've played this game before. Oops, I've just pressed that again by accident. <laughs> Bear with me, folks. But 
I didn't get into Final Fantasy until very late. Uh, this was, in fact... Uh, I'm done. There you go. This was the second Final Fantasy I ever played. And my buddy Aiden got me into them. Because he had a PlayStation and I had an N64. So I was playing Super Smash Brothers. I was playing, you know, Majora's Mask, Banjo, Kazooie, all those kind of games. And um, I didn't have a PlayStation. And it came to that moment where I borrowed him my console. And he borrowed me his. And he played all these N64 games he never played. And I played all the PlayStation ones. So Quistus is asking us if we've done the exam in the fire cavern. And we haven't. Squall was going to go this morning until he got injured by Sifa. And he doesn't make excuses, which is one thing I like about Squall. He, he might come across as a bit of a douche early game, but he's always straight into the point. And Quistus is telling us to meet at the front gate. She's also telling us that if we go back to our panel in our desk, we can get some goodies. But we've already done that, so it's okay. But what's going to happen... Uh, well, what I was saying, sorry is I got into it late, and the first one I played was Final Fantasy VII. And I loved VII, I, I still do. It's one of the most influential games I've ever played. And when I got to this one after I beat VII, I didn't like this one. You know, VII had such an impact on me, and it was such a different tone, that this one just kinda... I just didn't like it at all. And I played the entire first disc, and I wasn't digging it at all. So, if anybody's watching this thinking they never really liked this one, it was never as good, or they didn't give it a chance, I'm hoping that these videos will change your mind. Uh, this is Selfie, she's another character, and she's just come from Trabia Garden. She's going to ask for a tour in a moment, but I'm not going to give it, because we want to get down to some action. Like, if this is your first time, feel free to do it, because it's going to help you understand the various parts of the garden. Uh, I, I have a bad memory, so I'm still a bit misty with the garden, but... Uh, I know pretty much what I need to know. And this guy's going to give us some cards, which is super important, because we're going to be playing a lot of cards, guys. And uh, I need your input. If you don't enjoy watching it, uh, I'll start speeding it up or trimming it out. But a lot of this playthrough is going to be card-dependent. Uh, and I'm going to explain that in just a little while, once I've finished with this introduction. But I, I didn't really like this game when I first played it. And I stuck with it and it grew on me. And the more I played it, the more I enjoyed it. And It's become one of my favourites. And it's become one of my favourites because of... Because of the junction system. And because of the combat. And how it gives you so much freedom. And I'm hoping with this playthrough, it's going to... You know, maybe change some people's mind. Or maybe help some people rediscover a game they didn't touch. And I felt like it's probably best to represent this one because there's a lot of Final Fantasy 7 on YouTube. There's probably a lot of 8, but everybody seems to be doing 7 or doing 12. So I decided to do this one. But it isn't going to be strictly this, guys, because my playthrough is actually going to be a no-level playthrough. Mistakes can happen, and I might mess it up, but I'm attempting to beat the last boss with the base level team. And that involves a couple of uh, strict requirements. There we go. So we're going to try and play some cards. So the early Final Fantasies on the PlayStation 1, 8 and 9, both had card games. This is Triple Triad. This is Final Fantasy 8's card game. And I love it. I love card games. And I wish they'd bring one back on the most recent one that's going to be coming out. So the rules of this are, are pretty simple. We're starting with... Pretty horrific cards, but it's okay because we're going to build that up. And all you need to know if you don't know the rules is the highest number wins and the most cards flipped is the person who wins in the end. So just bear that in mind. And what happens is if you win, you get to take a card. Oh god, this guy's got much better cards than I have. And if you lose, uh, you lose a card. Which you're probably going to see in a moment because this guy's cards are, are shitting on mine. <laughs> oh no, no, we, we've got this. It's a draw, so we don't we don't get shit from it, but we should be okay. There's no plus rule or same rule. So yeah, wow. I think I'm going to go for that mini mod kid. Go for the mini mod kid. Get a power card. 
and use the power card. Oh, actually, forget that, guys. What I'll do is we'll go straight for, for Ifrit and we'll get his card and we'll use his card to bully some people and get some quick cards. That way, you don't waste too much time and we can get on with it. But yeah, these games, the it's there's like this frustration I've got with Japanese RPGs at this moment in time because the Western RPGs are so powerful in the industry at this moment. Japan are kind of losing their focus, and they're trying to make games like Western audiences want, and they're trying to make more Western games, and they're hiring different developers, and they're moving away from what makes them unique. And don't get me wrong, the JRPG has been played out. It's played out in the PS1 area, PS2. It had a good run, but there's no reason why it shouldn't evolve. I'm going to do some junction in a moment. And back in these days, when the technology was limited, they seemed to be so creative to do good things. Now that we have the technology, they seem to be simplifying things, and that's not what the, I wanted it to do. You know, more technology, I wanted it to be more complicated, more complex, more interesting, and it keep, seems to keep going the other way, making it more like a first person shooter, more like an on rails, like scripted events. Like this here, I'm going to skip this because uh, I don't want to read it to you guys, but what it's explaining is the power system on this game. So anybody who's played Final Fantasy VII will know they had materia. Anyone who's played Final Fantasy IX will know there was an ability system which you learnt from equipping items and learning skills off them. This game has junctioning and magic. And what it means is, when you equip a GF, which is a guardian force, which is a summon, it allows you to invest magic that you have into making your character stronger by boosting his stats. And the system is so convoluted and complex and the, the explanation is not so great. And at first, there's n you have no idea what you're doing. It's baffling. It's completely baffling. But if you stick with it, you can, you know, figure it out. And once you figure it out, you can make yourself extremely powerful. And what it does is, it promotes knowledge. It promotes knowledge of systems. And if you have that knowledge, oh, I need to change this. You can effectively break the game. 